Hey y'all, welcome to Craftable Things. I'm Patrice and y'all, the summer has gone by way too quickly and it's already time for me to return back to my classroom, but that's okay because guess what? It's also time for me to make me some new teacher shirts for the upcoming school year and Kale sent me their screen printing kit that they also sell on Amazon. A link will be listed below in the description. But they sent me the screen printing kit so that I can make me a few teacher shirts for this school year. So that's what we will be doing today. We are going to be using our Cricut machine to help us get this done. And yeah, so let's see what's in the box and let's make us a few shirts. Let's get started. <laughs> Now we're going to check out the contents of this kit. So of course it comes with some instructions and if you're into instructions, then this is gonna be where you start. But we're gonna start here. So this comes with six different colors of screen printing ink and I've purchased other kits before and it did not come with ink, so this is good to see. And depending on how your mixing skills are, you can mix you some other colors. We have masking tape, which is super important. We have some gloves and you want those gloves. We have this little knife or scraper or stirrer or something. I don't know what it is, but we have these squeegees and scrapers that are good for us to spread that ink onto the screen printing board. So depending on what size your image and board you're using, then you, you have tons to choose from. We also have these popsicle sticks or wooden stirrers, and it comes with four different screen printing boards, different sizes. So depending on what you're pressing and what size your image is, then you'll decide. In addition, it has this transparency film, and usually this is for if you have emulsion, you don't need a cutter for it. And we have an apron, which I always need. So that's everything we'll need. So let's head to Cricut and get started. Now we're inside of Cricut Design Space and we will be putting a stencil because I don't have any emulsion. And so right now we're going to upload the design that we'll be using. And I purchased this design from Creative Fabrica. A link will be listed below in the description. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to just take this apart because I want to use different colors. I don't want all the same color so we're going to use three different colors and so what I'm going to do now is just put this together so that we can make that happen so first I am going to just select the like colors here and we are going to weld the like colors together and I'm doing that by selecting the layers on the side and I'm just going to select all the colors that are the same and select weld and then those colors that's what we're going to use it's not going to be the same color as to the design Design here but that's what I'm going to do for each of the individual colors is just select all light colors and weld them together then we will be able to create the setup for our project all right so now I have all three colors separated and what we're going to do now is I'm just going to head over to the left panel and select shapes and draw about four four squares and I am just using these squares as registration marks for when we get ready to actually print onto the shirt. This will help me to line everything up correctly. All right, and so right now I'm just doing four squares in, or one square in each corner. You can set your registration marks however you'd like. You can use whatever shape you'd like. I just figured for the purpose of today's tutorial, we'll just go ahead and use some basic squares and we'll use four. Typically I may just use two, um, one at the top and one at the bottom in the center, but for this project we're gonna be using four. All right, and so all of that is pretty, looking pretty good. And what I'm going to do next is I am now going to, I'm just reducing the size of the screen, but I'm not changing the size of the text, which is about an 11 by eight. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to separate each color, but I want each of those colors to have the registration marks in the same exact location. So what I'm doing now is I'm just selecting all of the registration marks and then I'm selecting each individual color uh, part of the image and I'm just duplicating it and this is helping me to keep everything 
together. And so when we go in, go ahead and line it up, it is going to fit perfectly. And so once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and group each section and weld it. Or you really don't have to group it. You can just go ahead and weld it together if you'd like. But I'm just going to go ahead and group it or attach it just so that I have them all together and it prints out exactly or it cuts out exactly the way that I want it to, to cut out. All right, and so I'm just repeating that for all three of the different colors that we're going to be using today. I am welding them all, and so now I'm going to get ready to make it because really it's time to make it. But I'm just showing you guys here like how it's going to line up perfectly and how those registration marks really, really, really are important in getting this type of screen printing done when you're doing multiple colors. All right, so everything looks good. Now it's time to head over and make our our cut files. All right, so I'm using a mat today. Today we will be cutting with the Cricut Maker 3, but I am using a mat. Today we are going to be using permanent vinyl, and I find that using permanent vinyl, regular permanent vinyl works best. You want to make sure that you mirror your image. I know typically we only mirror when we're doing HTV, but the way that we're going to apply this to the screen print it must be mirrored in order for it to work correctly. If not, your items will not go in the correct direction. All right, so I'm going right now and I'm mirroring all of the, the, different, the different boards that we're gonna be using. And now I'm just gonna select the machine that we're gonna use. And again, we are using permanent vinyl. You can use other types of vinyl, um, but you really want, a vinyl that that the adhesive is really really firm and it's not going to move on your your screen printing board now it's time to cut our vinyl and I will be loading each individual piece of vinyl into the machine for each part of the design and once it's done we are going to go ahead and start weeding and when you're weeding this particular cut you are going to weed it differently than you weed your other cuts with vinyl so you are going to be weeding out the parts that you typically want to keep so we're weeding out the insides of that vinyl and you want to make sure you go ahead and weed out those registration squares because you are going to need them when you place them onto your screen printing board you'll see it as we move forward how those really work and to help make sure that we line everything up correctly. done weeding and it's now time for us to apply the transfer tape so that we can place this onto the screen printing board. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and lay the transfer tape down and apply the vinyl to the transfer tape because the vinyl is, is curled up and so it's a little more difficult applying the vinyl directly on top and so I found this to be easier. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you squeegee the back and the front because you really want to make sure that you get those tiny insides out as smoothly as possible because you want everything to be legible when you actually do spread that screen printing ink. All right, so now it's time for us to take away the backing and I am going to do it a little slowly. I know it looks like I'm doing it kind of fast because I sped the video up, but I'm actually doing it very slowly to make sure everything stays in place, that nothing lifts up because we don't want that. All right, so now I'm going to flip the screen printing kit or the screen printing board on the back side and we're going to place the vinyl on the back of the screen printing board. All right, and so you just wanna go ahead, make sure that you get it on there really well. And I am using the scraper to do that. I am scraping both sides because you really, really, really want it to stick. You don't want anything lifting up. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the transfer tape and I'm still doing 
doing it very softly because that adhesive really hasn't had that much time to really gel with the mesh on the back of the screen printing board. And so I'm just making sure everything stays down. I find it's better to use my hands than a weeding tool because I don't want to jab inside of that mesh. And so I'm able to still do the same thing that I would typically do with my, my weeder with my fingers. So you want to go ahead and just remove it very, very slowly. And everything came off really, really good. I'm very happy with that. You want to make sure you remove any air bubbles. And so to remove the air bubbles, I usually just kind of push that air through. And that typically works best for me to kind of flatten out the, the vinyl because you don't want any air bubbles because you don't want to mess up your, your print, right? Because that ink will go underneath those air pockets, okay? So just make sure that you just scrape it really, really good. It doesn't hurt to give it a second scrape. All right, so everything is set for this board and I'm going to be doing this for all of the parts of the images so that you guys know I'm only showing teacher, but I'm doing it for all of the other parts of the image. Right now, we need our masking tape. And so you can use masking tape or painter's tape. Right now we're using the masking tape that came with the kit. And I am just going around and taping all of the edges. And the reason why you're doing that is because when you start to spread that ink, you don't want any of that ink to go through any parts of the mesh that it should not, okay? And so those areas are exposed. And so I am just applying masking tape to cover the entire board. So you don't want any of that mesh exposed. So I usually just go ahead and tape all the way to the end of the board just to avoid any, any problems, okay? Make sure that you don't cover up any of your your image that you, you weeded away, but you wanna make sure that all of the mesh is covered all the mesh around your image is covered so right now everything is looking good and i'm just going to go ahead and finish the rest of the board so everything is set all of our boards are the way that they need to be and we can really get ready and and press our shirt or print our shirt screen print our shirt <laughs> but that's it these are the three boards that we're going to be using today so now it's time for us to get ready and screen print our shirt. And I am going to be placing this t-shirt form inside of the shirt. You can also place a piece of parchment paper or butcher paper inside. This step is important because you don't want any of that ink to go through your shirt. I have had where the ink at least goes through and it just stays on the t-shirt form and not on the other side of the shirt. So right now we're just gonna go ahead and place this t-shirt form inside of our shirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and lint roll my shirt. You can give yours a pre-press if you like. I usually don't pre-press my screen printing shirt. But so now we're gonna get ready to put on some gloves and I also have on the apron that came with the kit so that I don't get any ink onto my clothes. For today's project, we are going to be using the three screens that we've already placed the stencil on. And we are going to start with the word teacher. And I'm starting with this one because I can kind of see exactly where I want it to be. So it's going to help me with placement. In order for us to see exactly where we need to place the other stencils, I am going to place a piece of the masking tape underneath the registration squares. Now you can use painter's tape if you'd like, if you don't want to use the, the masking tape, but you wanna make sure that your registration squares are on top of a piece of the masking. With the painter's tape, you'll probably be able to see it a lot better, but with the kit, you get a nice roll of masking tape, so that also works just as well. I'm just going to go ahead and place this under and that is on top we're going to place this right there also and we are sticking it to the shirt so you want to make sure that it's sticking to the shirt not to your screen all right so with the blue painters tape it would definitely help a lot more but it's all good so now we're going to get ready and start using our ink that came with our kit. 
And so for today, we are going to use some bright primary colors. Now, if you want to get other shades of colors, like if you want a pink or purple, all you have to do is mix these paints to get the color that you want. But I would suggest mixing enough so that you can use it for the entire project. That way your color isn't off. So our first color is going to be the red and you want to make sure you stir your screen print ink so that you have a nice smooth consistency. All right, so it's nice and stirred. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go and we're going to place a little bit of this ink across the top. And you don't want to move your screen print or your screen because you don't want to shift anything. So you're going to have to be very careful. And so I'm making sure that I put enough at the top because it's going to have to come all the way down. So we're going to go ahead and just put a little bit more. And then I'm also going to make sure that I put a little right here. Doesn't have to be that much, but just so that we can know exactly where we need to, to go. So next we're gonna get our scraper and then I am going to, uh-oh y'all, let me put my clothes back on. I am going to hold the board down with one hand and y'all this ink gets you want to be careful with the ink as you guys see I already have some on my hands when applying the ink make sure that you go in the same direction also make sure that you hold your squeegee kind of slanted the way that I'm holding it now I got a lot of that ink stuck onto the squeegee but you just want to make sure that you get it off and always go in the same direction. You only need to go in like maybe two to three swipes across the image. You don't want to overdo it. That looks like that is going to be it for us. And you want to make sure that you're going in the same direction. You don't want to take it and flip it around or anything like that. So now before I remove the screen, we're going to scrape off the rest of this red into our paint bottle. So now we're going to lift our screen and we are going to let this dry for a few minutes before we place our next color on. When lifting the screen off, sometimes it'll feel like it's stuck to the shirt. You just want to just, you know, carefully take it off so that you don't spear any ink or anything like that. Now I am cleaning off my screen with some warm water and it helps if you have a spray nozzle. I'm just going ahead and cleaning this off. I don't want to remove the vinyl because I want to reuse this board eventually and you guys will see where I'm going to have to reuse it in a few minutes but I am just cleaning it off uh, so that I can reuse it and in case I want to use a different color and the warm water works perfectly and I am just going to lightly remove that ink with my my hands and then you want to flip it over and also clean the back off as well So now that I'm done cleaning off the screen, I am going to go ahead and place my shirt underneath the heat press, but I'm not going to let the plate down. I'm just sitting it under the warm press for about a minute or two to let that ink dry. All right, y'all. So now we're from under the press and I'm just touching it to make sure it's dry and it is dry. There is no ink coming off of our shirt so it is safe for us to press the next color so I kept it underneath the heat press for about a minute if you prefer to not use the heat press you don't have to use the heat press just make sure that that ink is dried so now it's time to place our arrow 
down and you want to make sure that your shirt is in the correct position because when we place the next screen on top this should match up perfectly and so you will see where those arrows are and you can just go ahead and start shifting your design as you should So now it's time to apply our second color and I've already stirred up our yellow ink and I am just going to put our ink along the side right here. And I'm not really worried about the registration marks on this print because we have the ones from the red so I just need to make sure that it is lined up correctly so now I'm just going to push this down and then we are going to start from this end and we are going to slide it over All right, so we are going to go ahead and clean off our scraper and we will remove the screen. So now it's time for us to lift our print or our screen. And you wanna be careful because sometimes that shirt will get stuck. And that's what we have. All right, y'all, so everything is looking good. So far, I'm pretty pleased with how everything is layering. I did make a mistake. My tape went too far over and it caught one of the swishes, but it's okay. And now we're gonna get ready to dry the yellow and then place the blue on top. But so far, everything looks amazing. So now we're ready to place our final screen on top and everything is looking really really good just that one little part so our yellow is dry and we are just going to match up our final screen and we're just going to do the same thing we did with the yellow just match it up you want to make sure that you have your shirt with the movement that I did as far as moving it to the heat press you just need to make sure that it is straightened out the way that it should be all right so we have everything lined up the way that it should be lined up and now it's time for us to apply the blue screen so now I'm just gonna hold it down I left this in to show y'all what not to do. So as I'm spreading the ink, I realized like there's a crease in the word squad and that is because of how I placed the image and how the t-shirt form is. There's a bend in the t-shirt form. And so when I spread the ink, that really did not help us with the shirt. So you wanna make sure you're spreading this on an even surface. And so I switched the squeegee around and turned it around to try to make sure that the ink was getting in that crease. And I, you, you're never supposed to do that. All right, so make sure that whatever it is that you're um, applying it on top of or your surface is even and flat. As you see, that ink smeared where I started scraping it in the wrong direction. And that's why you should not scrape it in the wrong direction. So now I'm pressing another shirt and I already made a mistake, but I wanted to press another shirt for one of my teacher friends. And yes, I am going to use that shirt that I messed up. Yeah, I will wear that proudly. So right now I'm pressing the other shirt, but as you guys saw, I did not have the masking tape 
fully underneath the square. And so it is best to use painter's tape. It's definitely best because you can see it more clearly. So now we're just going to go ahead and continue making this shirt. And this shirt actually turned out beautifully. I made sure at least that none of the masking was covering any part of the design. And so I'm very pleased with that. And as you see, you don't need to scrape it that many times. I just went across uh, that arrow two or three times. You all right, and so for the next part, I got to be careful where that bend is. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide this down a bit because I don't want that bend to affect this shirt. So now we're going to get ready to line this up again. And you want to make sure your shirt is stretched out. All right, so now we're lined up and we're just gonna go ahead and place our blue ink on top. I'm gonna hold it down and then we're gonna take it. I'm gonna take it and go over one more time. All right, let's see how everything turned out, if it turned out better than the last time. And I am just lifting this off and being very careful because it is sticking to the shirt. And actually, this looks a lot better. So I'm very happy. I'm very pleased with this. And I'm just going to go ahead and start removing that masking tape. But I would definitely recommend just using painter's tape. As y'all see, that one little part up there, yep, that paint got away from me. But everything's looking good, and I'm going to have to cure this shirt, but I do want to show you all the t-shirt forms. Look at that ink. That blue ink went through. The red didn't go through, or the yellow, but that blue certainly went through. And now I'm just removing the masking tape from the other shirt. I've already cured the other shirt, and so now it's time for us to cure the second one. But y'all... I'm loving this and so happy that my teacher friend and I are going to be teacher twinsies. And so now we're going to get ready to cure our screen print. And we are using the HTV Ron Auto Press today. And we will be pressing this at 320 degrees for 40 seconds. We're going to do this to both shirts so that this ink is cured. And so with this press, this is an auto press, so we're just going to slide it in. And once it's done, it will lift up. All right, y'all. So here is my shirt that we made with screen printing. And I love how it came out. I also have that one that I'm going to be sharing with my teaching buddy. And I'm sure that she's going to love it because... Why have a teacher squad and it's just one person wearing the shirt? Why not have more than one person wearing the shirt? So I love how this turned out. As you all saw, it was fairly, fairly easy to do. And I love this Kato screen printing kit. The only thing that I will say is, is that some of those items in there were for if you were doing it using Emotion, but there was no Emotion inside of the screen printing kit. So yeah. But I definitely want to try it out using Emotion. So I am going to get me some Emotion and we are going to do it the other way where we're going to be able to use the film and we will see how that's going to go because that process does not require a cutter. So you won't need a Cricut, you won't need a Cameo, you won't need any cutter and you'll just need your printer. So we're going to test that out also. But I really like this kit. It has everything in it that you need to be successful with screen printing. And if they had the emotion in there, this kit would be perfect. However, with this kit, you will need a cutter to cut you out a stencil. But as y'all saw, everything turned out really, really well. 
outside of some application issues on my part. But that's okay, that's to be expected. And I'm really happy with how, how our shirts turned out. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please check out the other content on this channel and be sure to hit that subscribe button. In addition, head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join Craftable Things there as well. But that's going to be it for today, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.